In this lecture, we'll be talking about the concept of opportunity cost. Now, opportunity cost arises out of the choices made by individuals and nations. And this is because of the concept of relative scarcity, a concept that we talked about in previous lectures, where our needs and wants are unlimited, and the resources that create the goods and services that we consume are limited. So we cannot satisfy all our needs and wants, so we need to make choices to maximize our living standards, which comes back to the concept or the overall uh, goal of economists, which is to maximize their living standards. Now let's look at the definition of opportunity cost. The opportunity cost definition is regarding these choices. So it is the opportunity foregone when one alternative is chosen over another. And it is measured measured as the value of the next best alternative. Now this definition can be it can be a little bit uh, long-winded so let's break it down I will give you a working example of what I mean by the opportunity foregone and how it can be measured as the next as the value of the next best alternative okay so last night I was uh, I was very hungry so I went to a sushi bar and there were two rolls that I really wanted there was the salmon roll and the prawn roll so they both would have satisfied my hunger but the prawn roll Oh, sorry, the salmon roll in this case was two dollars fifty, and the prawn roll was also two dollars fifty. So that that made my decision a whole lot harder because I only had uh, two dollars fifty in my wallet, and I could only buy either a salmon roll or a prawn roll. So there lies an opportunity cost, and the opportunity cost is if I buy the salmon roll, then therefore I wouldn't have enough money to buy the prawn roll. So what I did was I valued the worth of each roll to me. So I would have paid, because the salmon roll looked really good, I would have paid $2.70 for that. But I don't have $2.70, I only have $2.50. And luckily, the salmon roll was only $2.50. I would have paid $3 for the prawn roll because I love prawns. So therefore, I made the choice that I would buy the prawn roll to satisfy my hunger, and the opportunity cost here would be the salmon roll. So here would be the opportunity cost. So the opportunity cost... The opportunity for gone is the salmon roll. I didn't have enough money to eat the salmon roll, so therefore that was the opportunity gone. So here I can measure the opportunity for gone as $2.50 worth of salmon roll. But in this case, I bought the prawn roll, which was worth the exact same amount of money, but I gained a $3 worth of benefit from that. Okay. So that's a working example of opportunity cost. So why is this important to nations and consumers? This is because we need to make these decisions every day. So let's break down the economy into two. So we have government and consumers, because as we discussed earlier in the lecture, businesses also come back to the idea of consumers, because those who use businesses, who own businesses, sorry, are, are also consumers. So let's go back to the two sector of consumers and the government. So what opportunity costs do they have to go through government? So what, are the, what opportunity costs do these two uh, types of people or organisation need to go through into their day-to-day -day lives? So for consumers, it might be very simple. What food to buy? And that was a concept that I had to go through uh, when I bought my sushi. So I had to decide whether to buy the prawn roll or the salmon roll. Also, what, where to buy how your house? Where to buy your house? So you can go, you can go in a city versus the suburbs or even the rural areas. Now, because house purchases are so big, you can't choose it all unless you're filthy rich, but most people aren't filthy rich. So we have to choose between inner city, suburbs, or the rural areas, which are just farms and all that. 
So there lies in an opportunity cost that most consumers or most households will need to go through, whether to live in the inner city, the suburbs, or the rural areas. So the opportunity for God in this case, if you bought an inner city suburb or an inner city house, will be for living in the suburbs or living in rural areas. The government, let's come back to the concept of the education and other sectors that we talked about in the video of relative scarcity. We talked about how the government could inject money into the education sector because they need more teachers, or they could inject money into the retail sector because they are struggling against uh, against other other nations who have a lower cost of labor. So, what the government could do that is they could subsidize either one, subsidize either industry, but the government say only has. 10 million dollars to spend in this case so the opportunity for gone when if they subsidize the retail sector would be injecting more money into the education sector and similarly if they subsidize the education sector they would forego the opportunity of subsidizing the retail sector and all these decisions are made so that we maximize our living standards and that comes back to the fundamental concept of economics, which is to maximize their living standards and to satisfy the most needs and wants we can with the available resources. So there's a brief introduction into the concept of opportunity cost and how we allocate our resources, which are land, labor, and capital. Let's write that down. Land, labor, and capital. So that opportunity cost measured by the next best alternative is minimized and that our living standards are maximized.